Welcome to the SkyGuider Pro instructional video. We will be showing you how to set up and use the functions of the mount. The basic SkyGuider Pro kit includes the SkyGuider Pro, the Alt Azimuth base, a micro USB cable, a mounting bracket, a counterweight kit, and a carry bag. In this photo, you can see the ports of the SkyGuider Pro. From left to right, we first have an SD4 guide port for auto guiding. This port allows you to use a guiding camera with the Sky Guider. Then we have the shutter triggering port, a micro USB port for charging, and a port for an optional iOptron hand controller. Here we are charging the Sky Guider through the micro USB port. When it is charging or is moderately charged, the battery indicator light shown here will show a steady light. When it is fully charged, it will blink rapidly. If it is not being charged and is low on power, then the light will be blinking slowly. You can charge with the Sky Guider turned on or off. However, if it is switched off, then the battery indicator light will be turned off. In addition, you should not charge the battery if it is below 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. When you first turn on a mount, the center button adjusts the tracking speed of the mount between solar, lunar, half celestial, and celestial speeds. If you hold the center button, you will be allowed to change the hemisphere setting. Continue pressing the center button to select your hemisphere. Holding the center button a second time will turn on the polar scope light. There will be more on that later. Next, we are setting up the sky guider on the mounting base. Loosen this screw to open the base. Then, simply slide in the sky guider and then retighten the base. Next, we will demonstrate a ball head mounting. You will need, of course, a ball head as well as this mounting block. Simply take the mounting block and screw it into the ball head. Then, you can attach it to the mount. Tighten the screw to secure. Depending on purposes, you may want to use this mounting bracket instead, allowing you to mount two cameras or a counterweight kit. Simply loosen the screw and attach it the same way as the original mounting block. Next, you will want to place the mount on a tripod. If you have this recommended tripod, then first, you will want to loosen and push up this screw. Then place the mount directly on top of it. Tighten the screw to secure the mount. Next, we will mount a camera to the ball head. Remove the dovetail base from the ball head. Then, attach the dovetail to your desired camera. Then, simply reattach the dovetail to the ball head. For attaching a camera to the double mounting bracket, you can use this mounting block with an included quarter inch screw. Then, it can be attached to the declination bracket, which is this ring on the main bracket. A ball head can be directly attached to the mounting base without a mounting block. Simply take this large silver screw and screw it into the bracket like so. 
Then you can simply screw on the ball head directly. Because the double mounting bracket is longer on one side, it can be rotated to achieve a better center of gravity or prevent physical interference. The easiest way is to turn the RA clutch counterclockwise as shown here. Then rotate the bracket and turn the clutch clockwise to secure. The mounting ring on the bracket is also able to be attached to either end. Simply remove the four screws with a hexagonal screwdriver. Then simply rotate the bracket as shown before and reattach the ring to the other end. A camera can be attached directly to the mounting block without the usage of a ball head. Once attached, the camera and the bracket can be turned freely to face any direction. It is best to use the long end of the bracket to prevent physical interference. An optional dovetail saddle can also be used to mount a telescope. Simply mount the dovetail saddle onto the bracket using the mounting block. Attach the dovetail saddle using the four screws as shown in the photo. Then simply mount the telescope. To adjust the altitude, simply turn the knob on the back of the mount. After adjusting, this small white triangle should indicate your current latitude. To adjust the azimuth, unlock the azimuth locking knobs by turning them slightly counterclockwise. Then turn the two azimuth adjusting knobs. Depending on your latitude, it is possible to reverse the mount to ensure it faces the correct direction and maintain a good center of gravity after adjusting the altitude. Next, we will demonstrate how to set up a counterweight. Attach the counterweight rod to the unused end of the bracket. Next, we have the counterweight. If you look closely, you can see that one end of the counterweight hole is smaller than the other. Make sure to slide on the counterweight with the small end first. This allows the weight to be adjusted to its maximum or minimum height. Then. Simply screw in the cap of the counterweight rod. This prevents the counterweight from falling. Then you can adjust the counterweight as low or as high as you want. Up next is the mount's polar scope. The polar scope is integrated in the center of the sky guider. Remove this cap to access the eyepiece. The eyepiece is used to focus the polar scope. On the double mounting bracket, remove this cap in the center to uncover the front of the polar scope. If you are using the single mounting block, you will need to remove it to uncover the polar scope. To illuminate the polar scope, press and hold the center button on a sky guider twice in a row. The arrow buttons can then be used to adjust the illumination. When you look in the polar scope, you should see this reticle. Use the eyepiece to focus as needed. When it is dark, this is what the reticle will look like when the polar scope light is used. Make sure it is in the proper 12 o'clock position with the 12 exactly on top, otherwise the light will not be able to illuminate the reticle and it won't be visible. For easy polar alignment, you can use the Ioptron Polar Alignment app on the iPhone. For the best accuracy, adjust the mount so that Polaris or Sigma Octantis matches the position of the green dot as shown in the app. 
For Android users, please refer to the manual for an alternative app. Now, we are demonstrating a double camera setup. This can be used to attach a second camera or a guiding camera. To slew the RA axis, simply press and hold the left or right button on a sky guider. Observe the slewing of the cameras as I press each button accordingly. This completes this instructional video. We hope that you enjoy the SkyGuider Pro.